Um, sorry, the, the the leaf fell out of my microphone. So, um, Rock Nation signed her. They did that whole big lavish thing where they gave her rose on top of some skyscraper somewhere in the middle of New York, overlooking Manhattan or something. Really epic shit. Rock Nation know what they're doing, right? So, I think Rock Nation too need to take some ownership. Have they got a label? Or is it just a production management team? Why didn't they have their own label? Why are they why are they putting ma- artists in this position where, or maybe they have a relationship with Atlantic, isn't it? Right? It's an Atlantic partnership where if you sign with Rock Nation, you get uh, right. Is it an Atlantic thing? I'm not sure what it is, but it's just a bit. It's a bit um, scummy that they'll do this. Why wouldn't they directly talk to this Carl Crawford and just get the deal done if they want to? If they want to like co-partner and have it on the same, I don't know. So, um, everybody in the industry knows this is what Jay-Z and Rock Nation do. They come in, find the smallest thing wrong with the problem, um, because there, there weren't any problems before she left. And then she says that she, I didn't want to negotiate. Okay, tell everybody your definition of negotiating. Your definition is, okay, I'm going to send Suge Knight's old lawyers to come in and it's a stick-up. Of course I'm like, this isn't a negotiation, it's a robbery. They want to make it look like I'm greedy. No, they're trying to keep me out of everything. She keeps saying, them niggas over there are negotiating my contract. Them ends over there are sitting there right next to her. T. Ferris is the one. Her mum did the contract. I'm new to business. I let this guy, T. Ferris, run my whole business because I knew and absolutely nothing about it. Zero. So he wrote the contract up. I didn't do it. A little bit bad there throwing his man at the bus, but I can understand it. They want to make a big deal about it. We sign a deal, honor your contract, and let's just keep doing business. How we've been doing it, everything is fine. Nobody's trying to rob you. When Megan announced um, her management deal with Rock Nation, from my understanding, you found out the news the same time as everyone else, correct? Oh my God. <laughs> this is awful. So he found out on Instagram too, when it got put up on Shade Room or something. The guy T. Ferris, the one who was helping me with business, he was handling Megan for me. She's a girl. So he was used to being a road manager. I was letting him handle the business. And he said, we're going to Rock Nation. We've got a meeting. And I said, oh, cool. We're going we're gonna to go meet and meet Jay-Z? I'm actually excited because I got to meet Jay-Z. My, I got to meet Jay-Z myself, you know. He looks up to this man. And he said, I said, what's going on? He said, um, no big deal. We're just going to show up, show us around the building. Little small shit. <laughs> Whenever someone says something like that about a big meeting with somebody with a legend like Jay-Z at Rock Nation, right? A staple in the industry. You know it's absolute BS, right? We're just going to go see the building. Come on, really? Um, now, you know, it's nothing serious. Well, cool. So I didn't go because we were just uh, on tour with her. Me and her, me and Megan are perfectly fine at this moment. Next thing you know, I'm on a plane. And I'm thinking the whole industry is going to try and take Megan from me. Not my homeboy. So he's, he's worried already, but he's not thinking his dude's going to do it. So I go and link up with Jay Prince. Next thing you know, the picture is posted up on the internet of him saying, you know, people are not loyal and shit, which is a bit of a bad move. And someone says, the comments are like, oh, you're bitter. No, I was already posting J Prince before when I found out like everybody else. I got emotional and made one comment, which is, you know, you shouldn't have done, but hey, they took that and ran with it. Like, oh, he's bitter. He's mad. Look, I'm just trying to see what's up. I thought they had enough respect for me to at least tell me something. But it's cool. She don't have to tell me about that. That's fine. But at the end of the day, Tell me, tell them that their plan, that their plan was. Tell, tell them what their real plan was. Their real plan was to get you out of my contract so they can give signing to Rock Nation. That's all they want. We gave this girl sixty forty split. Now go ask the artist about that. She got parts of her masters the first time. You think Jay Z would have gave her part of her masters for the first record deal of Rock Nation? Fuck no. Then she gets ten hundred thousand dollars advance. A uh, show, sorry. She don't. She she don't want to pay up. So the problem is, I think, with the 360 deal is that they get a part of everything. They get a 60-40 split of her record sales, her merch, and her shows. So if she gets paid 100000 they have to get they have to see 40% of that too. Which, I think he's arguing that in most record deals, the 60-40 split is actually the other way around. It actually goes more to the label and then less to the artist. But this time around, they gave her 60% and the record label gets 40 It's still a crazy amount. I don't know why anyone will sign a 360 deal. I think the reason why people sign 360 deals, I think primarily is that because you usually get a quite a big cash advance for the fact that they're going to take more out of you along the way because you could end up being you know for every for every uh kid cuddy there's a charles hamilton right you could just disappear into the reefer and it could also be the next big global superstar so in your in your understanding if you're kid cuddy it doesn't matter if you're a 360 deal because you just keep making money it might not be as much as you would do if you had your the majority of the splits or if you had you know ownership of stuff it might not be as much as it could be but because you just keep generating income, it doesn't really necessarily matter. But it does get a little bit tricky when you're at that kind of cusp like Megan Thee Stallion and you're trying to cross over and really make it and blow. And the money that you're making for the work that you're putting in just isn't what it should be. It just feels a bit flat. I get why the frustration is there. 
Anyway, then she gets a $100,000 show and she doesn't want to pay up. That's what the issue was about. She signed with Rock Nation in August and decided she didn't want to pay no more. And I think Joe Budden mentioned in his podcast that supposedly Rock Nation has a deal with Live Nation. So she probably gets booked shows via Rock Nation that makes sure that she doesn't give them. So she gets paid directly through Live Nation, doesn't doesn't need to pay a record label. Rock Nation probably takes like a 10, 20% cut from her check, which is far less than what her record label is doing. She sees a lot more money. The people at Rock Nation are a lot nicer to her. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I guess I, I can see why she got a little bit like dizzy with the whole Rock Nation thing. Jay-Z talking about her like, business. She's meeting Beyonce. I get what's happening here. Um, they're using that same strong arm tactic so that I can renegotiate the contract. They're holding the money and they haven't paid me since August. Jesus. She done over 15 shows. Y'all do the math. She gets $100,000 a show. She owes me and I haven't rec- recouped almost $2 million what, what, what we spent on her. Building her up so that Rock Nation would want to come around. Which is very annoying too, I guess, for an independent label. If you're the one building up the artist and then the Rock Nation comes with all their glitzy, you know, um, co-signs and their nice offices and their rooftop toast Sting and DJ Khaled and all this amazing shit and Beyonce popping in and saying hi. It's like, um, um, where was Rock Nation when uh, when we was grinding and riding around and in back streets? Rock Nation was nowhere to be found. Soon as we spent our money, blow it up. Uh, all, all of a sudden, these strangers, uh, people just met. They introduced you to Beyonce, and now you, we the devil. We we were just the angels sent from the sky. Now we're the devil just because Jay Z saved you. You're so fake. Again, it's a very messy topic. Much more the interview there to talk about. Uh, you can read it yourself. I'll link it in the show notes for you guys to check it out. But again, the truth lies somewhere in the middle here with Crawford uh, v. Megan Thee Stallion. Again, I think it's a it's a it's a cautionary tale for most up and coming artists. Please do not sign a deal until you have the means to or bootstrap yourself until you get to a point where you can renegotiate because at the end of the day you give yourself more bargaining power to negotiate a better deal if you have something more to back up with it if you have the numbers to back up the numbers of shows the fans the streams whatever it may be so there's no need to spend there's no need to take the money from the record label up front now whilst you're still coming up because it's going to bite you in the ass later on down the line as it has done Megan Thee Stallion she could have easily if she wanted to bootstrap done it herself not easily but she could have done it herself but she took the easy option out to kind of quicken the journey for her to become a star, which I understand because if you're struggling and doing open mics and shitty bars and pubs, you want to make it as soon as possible. I know even with my DJing, right? I much prefer to kind of make it and become a touring uh, club hopping DJ sooner rather than later. But I also know that the, the longer the slog is now at the beginning, the more longevity I have towards the end and the more opportunity I have to negotiate higher and higher rates for myself and be a bit more picky about where I play later on towards the line. But in the short term, I'm going to suffer because I don't have the automatic cosign or the ability to go and just play wherever because I don't have the funds to do that. Do you know what I mean? So that's the kind of sacrifice you have to be made. But I just think nowadays in 2020, there's literally no excuse for an artist to be um, hoodwinked into signing a deal like this. Even though it's not hoodwinked, even though it's a kind of a pretty um, standard record industry deal, it sounds like I don't think you should ever be in a position where you have to be at the behest or at the kind of beck and call of a label, you know, requesting they get money from all your stuff, your merch, your shows, your stream. It's insane. You don't need to do that. You could easily do that on your own. And then once it gets to a level where you need to kind of boost up, you can then kind of sign an exclusive one album, two album deal with a record label and just shop yourself around and pick up checks as you go along, right? You, you would imagine you, you bootstrap yourself in the beginning. You do all on your own. You work a job. You put your money into your artistry. You blow up. You negotiate a record label. You sign a one album deal, a two album deal. You get a good advance in the beginning of it. You know how to make that money work. You know how to make money work anyway. You don't have a lot. So if someone gives you a big cash advance, you can easily make that work for you seven, ten times fold, right? And then you do that two albums and you shop yourself around again. You just keep bouncing around from, especially with the streaming platforms out there, which are effectively record labels anyway. You could be making so much money hand over fist, even without shows. So imagine you're giving up your shows to the big part of your income and you're giving up part of your streams. It's just a really insane story to in the beginning. Um, but again, hopefully it sheds more light on it because Megan Stallion is a popular person. People will obviously see, oh, wow, if Megan Stallion is a shitty deal, imagine my deal. So hopefully that is something of a cautionary tale going forward. 